Hello my little goblins, we're back at it again and this time we have a new deck profile and this one is especially spicy. So I know you guys have been looking at, like you, you guys are interested in seeing some Melfi decks or at least like the Melfi Sprite deck, right? Uh, well, most of the Melfi Sprite decks, they just run two Melfis in the entire deck. So they usually run Caddy with Penny. And the other cards they run is the Mary Melfi is with the Melfi of the Forest. Now, we're running only these two in the extra deck, but we are running a five-card Melfi in the deck, okay? I know it's not. We're not running the whole deck Melfi, but it's because we want to win games, right? So, uh, we got Melfi Caddy, Melfi Puppy, Melfi Wally, Melfi Penny, and then the unofficial Melfi, uh, Kalantosa, which this card is a free pop. So we're going to explain how the combo works uh, with the Melfi cards. Uh, and then you guys, well, I'm going to just show you in a game. Uh, but you guys are going to see how the deck performed. And uh, I'm looking forward to see how, how good it is on the ladder. So we are in Diamond, so you'll probably see a lot of tier limit. But we'll try and get a variety of games. All right, let's go to the games. Hello, everybody. We're here with game number one against Iowa. And uh, our, our starting hand's actually kind of like, man, it's kind of like whatever. Uh, but we should still be able to full combo with this. Uh, <clears throat> you guys are going to be able to see the power of this uh, board. Go and sprite off. We went spr uh, started, by the way, just because uh, our hand was particularly weak. The only reason why we did that, bring back Jet. The reason why we didn't bring back Swap Frog like you normally do is because we only have two Swap Frogs in the deck. Otherwise, you probably would bring back Swap Frog, uh, Melody of the Forest. So this card, you always grab. So you always want to grab Wally with this card, okay? Ronin Toad's going to activate. It's going to Special Summon. We go into IP Mascarina. We got Carrot. So I'm going to tell you this right now. The one mistake I already made is Melfi of the Forest should swap prices with a, a Sprite Carrot. We need Sprite Carrot here, so we're protected against anything our opponent does. Uh, a lot of people are running evenly matched these days, so... And then end of turn, Wally activates their effect and special summons. So this is a very powerful board, and you're going to see why. So he's going to imperm the Sprite Carrot. This is why I said you should have placed a card here. So I activate uh, IP Mascarina to actually interrupt this. And then I was going to use Spray Elf to bring back Carrot. Right? That's my thought process. That was a pretty good process. But my opponent had called by the grave as well. You know, sometimes it just got it. It is what it is. You, get, you start to get used to it when you, you get tortured every game. Uh, and then we get even lead. So this is a very painful even lead, obviously. I'm going to be losing pretty much everything. Uh, now, what would you guys keep if you guys were playing this? If the answer was this stupid, fucking, beautiful, actually, you know, adorable kangaroo, you were correct. So, we're going to keep kangaroo. Because your opponent has no idea what this kangaroo does, so. He plays, uh, so he's playing a uh, live twin sprite, right? But this one card is going to allow us to just beat him. So... Now we activate Caddy, and so the way the way these Melfi cards activate, if you guys are completely new to Melfi, when your opponent special summons or normal summons a monster, while you have the Melfi on the field, they bounce back to the hand and then they have an additional effect. Wally lets you special summon two from the deck, Caddy lets you add a card to the a beast to the hand, and then Puppy lets you special summon a beast to the field, right? So Puppy, we're gonna special summon this. So this is what you always do. You want to special summon Kalatos. And then you add Penny. So Kalatos is going to activate first. And then Penny activates second. You don't have a choice. You can't layer this differently, by the way. You can't, like, choose Penny to go first. Because Kalatos is a mandatory effect. So now Penny gets summoned. Now when Penny gets summoned, you can immediately go into a Synchro Monster. So, our choices is Arclight, which absolutely bones tier limit. Uh, and the other one is Mary Melfi's. This card is a bounce. So, if you guys don't know, he uses normal summon. If we get him off of both these cards in the field, 
we probably just end his turn. So we pop, and now Mary Melfi's is going to bounce, and then his end turn his turn ends right there. Awesome. We have this Gamma Burst in hand. You guys already know what's going to happen. He's going to get absolutely eviscerated. Add Jet. I mean, we have like a bajillion damage in, in, on the field at this point. Boom. And he just concedes. He doesn't let this guy or slaps in because he's a baby. Little baby. Little crybaby. Let's get to the next game. Hello, my beautiful little buggers. Uh, we're playing against Azura Flame. Very edgy. And he's playing... Uh, Pendulum Magicians. So while he's doing his combo, which is gonna be a 40 minute thing. Uh, well, it's not gonna be that long. He kind of We kind of fuck him over a little with the Ash Blossom, but The reason why we have Plague Spreader Zombie in the deck is because when you draw these Melfi cards are essentially bricks besides Wall Wally is actually fine to have in hand because then you don't have to really go into forest uh, But they're essentially bricks for the most part, right? Uh so what you typically want to be doing is you use Plague Predator Zombie to shuffle. You can because Plague Predator Zombie is not once per turn. So if you get it in the graveyard, right, fairly easy to do. Uh, you can legitimately go into. You can legitimately send. Let's say I had another Melfi in hand. I could send Kalantosa to the deck. Then I could go into an Egg Z monster, send it back to the graveyard, and then use it again to send the other Melfi to the deck. Okay, so. But he sets up a Beast Dweller, so I can't do that, regardless. And he goes into Apollosa, so I don't have much of, much options here with my board. Alright, so we're gonna draw, draw Starter. This is probably one of the best cards I could have drawn. So, thank the Lord. And then I'm going to normal summon Plague Spreader Zombie. I go into Sky Cavalry. We attack. We kill the Apollosa because it's only 1600 attack. Then we go into Downward Magician. And you guys know I'm Zeusing the fuck out of this guy. Or girl. Could be either or. And boom. They're going back. Starter. Boom. You guys thought the combo ended here? Mm-mm-mm. Remember, we could actually set this back to the deck, too, if uh, our graveyards weren't locked. So we go in Melfi in the forest. I summon this in attack all the time to troll, uh, but you should be setting this in defense. <laughs> so I guess I'm in the wall. So now, now you might be saying, you know what? You have a Zeus activation and you got a bunch of annoying shit with these Melfi cards. It's actually a pretty good board. <sighs> He obviously has both Pendulum cards. He goes into that, which honestly, I was kind of surprised. I thought he was going to use Crown Razor to special summon first, but no, he actually just goes straight for the Pen Summon. <clears throat> Melfi Wall is going to activate. Set, set. We got Puppy and Cat. Oh, these cards are so much fun to play with, too. And I really do think it's really considered. I know it's only a few Melfi cards. But, like, you see the Melfi cards every game because of the forest. I, cho I chose not to special summon with Puppy, but t technically we do have a target because we have Nimble Beaver in the deck. So we, do we did have a target to summon. Uh, but I didn't... Ch I chose not to special summon uh, because uh, I'd rather draw the Nimble Beaver and just have it. You know what I mean? I just felt like it was just... Uh, Gonna clutter the board for no reason. Especially if I was gonna end up Zeusing, you know? So we go into Mary Melfi's here. Mary Melfi's, I'm just gonna, I'm doing this to take him off of going into a two. So he's already gone into Electromite, but now he can go into the, um, the Pendulum Wizard that lets him draw a card. I mean, he's still kind of screwed because he's not gonna be able to pen summon regardless. So, but I just wanted to take him off of it. He just sets a card and then he ends because he knows I was just... I literally... what he, If he passed the turn over like that, I was just going to Zeus the board and then just full combo and kill him. So, yep. Is what it is. Let's get to the next one. Alright, we're here with game number three. And, um... Yeah, our hand's kind of bussing. Uh, the DD Crow is pretty good if our opponent was on tier limit or something. 
But, spoiler alert, uh, they're not. I mean, you can kind of see what they're on. I kind of feel bad because they are playing heroes, which obviously... I mean, this is Diamond, so I don't feel too bad. They're obviously doing something right with it. But it's not like a super OP deck and stuff, you know? But we're going to fast forward through this a little because it's kind of repetitive. Uh, he ashes my Gigantic Sprite, so we normal summon DD Crow. We know, like, I have just, I just had a hard feeling that he was not playing Tier Lament. Uh, and even if he was, I don't want to... Um, having Penny in my opening hand is not, like, the end of the world. So, P Penny is one of the Melfi cards that, like, if you have in your opening hand, it's fine. It's completely fine. Because you with the Caddy effect, you just add... You, like, the card you end up adding to your hand is going to be, um... Like nimble, n nimble mongoose. So, or nimble beaver, whatever. So we go Melfi the forest, Melfi, boom. And this uh, carrot, we're gonna grab with the elf on his turn. So we're gonna add. He takes advantage of carrot not being on the field, so he fusions. He's gonna be in a rude awakening because we do have smashers. We bounce, then Melfi of the Forest, he's going to force him to pop, and then I can just chain smashes. Goodbye. Bye-bye. It looks like I'm the true savage. Banished. Now he's going to activate Malicious. We're just going to activate both our cards. Dude, these cards are so much fun to play, dude. I really do recommend trying this out. It's really not that expensive, too. If you have Sprite, you really just craft one Ultra Rare. Pop. And he just concedes, because we have the Negate. We have the Negate, and we also have a Spell Negate still. So, like, even if he had something else, we probably we were going to stop him regardless. So, I don't know. He was, in, he was in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. And that's what the, what the Melfi cards do. Ton of interruptions on, like, one card. Like, Wally. Think about this. Wally by himself... Provides like, let's see, one, two, like three interruptions by himself. Because you get a pop, you get a negate off of the forest, and then you get a um, arc light or the other bounce. Hello, we are here with game number four, and we're playing against Handless. I assume he's playing with his toes. I noticed I wrote I open Rodent Totem a lot in the hand, even though it's a one of in the deck. I'm gonna go into Gigantic Sprite. Here's the swap frog, sends the other swap frog. Remember we only got two swap frogs, so we're kinda ready did its deal. It doesn't matter what you bring back here. IP Mascarena. Boom, brings it back. Starter. Go into blue. Red, Melfi, boom, everything's popping off. Alright, so, this, this obviously this board looks really strong, but I will say one of the weak points of this is uh, we have to have him do something for us so I can use Red or Carrot to free up some board space for Wally. So, that's the only weak thing. It's fine, we're going to max see him. He activates Enclasia. He uses the effect. I just bur I burn red, which I don't know if I should have. Uh, I also was like super greedy too. I I I got rid of Wally because I was almost sure he would use the spell. Uh, I actually like looking back at this. Melfi of the Forces negates like really bad because uh, it's super slow. Like so, just to give you an idea, when the because because the way it triggers is. Uh, pretend he uses a branded fusion, right? He goes into um, the stupid card that fuses, the 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 Despian card that fuses. Uh, he goes into that Lubellion, right? And my Melfi card triggers. It bounces back to my hand, and then it does the effect, whatever, right? I can't actually negate the Lubellion with this card because I have to wait for my all my Melfi cards to trigger and activate until I, then I can use this card's effect. And it's like you—it's ha very odd the triggering on it. 
So, like, if you have to get rid of this, get rid of this. It's like the worst interrupt. It's, it's barely an interrupt. I'm going to say it's half an interrupt or a quarter interrupt. Now, we're going to talk about in a situation. There is a situation where the card's insane. I'll, I will, we'll get to that because we have a game for it. But Good thing he had called by the grave because then I used my sprite carrot. <laughs> if he had double called by, I'd be so tilted. I'm like, I got rid of my Wally for no reason. Uh, so th this is the reason why we run Avermax. Avermax is absolutely insane. Because remember the tier limit decks? Remember how those are running rampant even though we haven't really played against any? Uh, well, guess what? If you play Herald of Arclight, it only has a thousand defense. It's very easy to kill. But if you have Mech Knight Crusadia, this card makes it so your opponent can't attack anything besides this card. So unless they have something else to stop this, they're kind of screwed. So we're going to continue the combo. We we ended up banishing the Eb Edge Imp Chain. He activates Branded Fusion. This is honestly fine and dandy. And then he's activating Meryl. He runs like a small, this guy runs like a small tier limit package. Because I guess Tail Mint with Brandon kind of works pretty well, so. So we're going to do this. So remember, his fusions are going to go off first. So he goes into Masquerade. And then he's going to go into Mirror Jade. So the nice thing here is, like I said, this is kind of like a nothing. Like, this does actually do something here. Because I get to negate this for free. I do get a nice negate off, and this guy goes for the banish. He's obviously going to banish Magnet Avermax. It's the big, most annoying card in my field. We get the negate, and then he protects his card. I thought this was the dumbest thing he could have done, because he knows I have Penny, but I guess he doesn't know how these cards work, which most people don't. Now I can just go to Mary Melfi's, and I just bounce this, right? Which is completely fine. At least, like, I, he was about to board wipe my field with it, if, me popping that. But he really wanted to keep it for some reason. Go figure. So now I bounce it. Have fun. And now I just get to link these off into Sprite Elf. He, you're right, you guys already know what I'm going to do. I do this to everyone. And we're just going to go for the biggest damage ever. Goes into Cat Shark. I feel like Cat Shark is just like a more card. If you're running Gamma Burst... I don't think you need to run Cat Shark. I run it just because I like to see big numbers. Look at that. 7,800. Ugh. I kind of annoyed because I didn't hit the trigger with the uh, other sprite card to do more damage. But it is what it is. All right. We're going to get the next one. Hello. This is for the fifth game. And we got one more after this. Uh, this is against Tier Limit. Surprise, surprise. Uh, we have the Ash for the Max C, which is nice, obviously. Because if we didn't, we would be kind of annoyed. We'd, probably, we'd be in a lot of trouble. So we're going to Nimble Beaver. We're gonna we're gonna fast forward because you guys already know how this this works, right? Gigantic Swamp Frog sends Rodent Totem. So now now we can actually use Sprite Elf to bring back Swamp Frog because we had we didn't open Rodent Totem in hand. <laughs> so now we bring it back. Here comes Melfi of the Forest. Summon and attack. Show dominance. Don't be a pussy. You got Wally. Jet. Jet gets Smashers. Blue gets Carrot. And we're going to go to IP. We're going to have Carrot. And then set, set. Boom. We have a very good board. This is a very strong board. All right. So he's playing tier. So, so big, stupid. I, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say I'm a big, stupid idiot. I feel like I should have just like activated Imperm on this immediately. So, when you're playing Melfi's for the first time, something weird that you're going to notice is like before anything else happens, when someone summons a monster, you always get like a trigger. I was like, oh, do you want to just activate Wally? And yes, you can activate Wally, but then you get another activation afterward. It's like, do you want to chain like Impermanence or Smashers? I, for some reason, hit no on this, and I just didn't imperm this, but you probably should imperm this. Probably one of their better imperms, to be honest. Um, 
We see our opponent had maxi anyway, so I actually think saving the imperm is probably not even the worst choice anyway. Because, like, he's gonna pretty much draw a fuck ton of cards from my Melfi cards anyway. And now he activates Heartbeat. I'm actually going to negate this Heartbeat. So, I know that sounds psycho. So I negate this Heartbeat, and I, I, I did this because I... He, in my mind, right, I didn't activate Imperm on this card, right? So he's probably thinking this is 100% Smashers. So if he thinks it's 100% Smashers, he's more likely to do a play that he's not even thinking about me Imperming a, like a very crucial card like Kikalios. So that's the reason why I was like, I need to protect this card because he doesn't know Imperms. Like, he definitely doesn't think I have Imperm because I would really just... No, a normal human being when he just flipped it up. So I'm like, you know what? I gotta go this 10,000 10, IQ play. Because I have to make this into a 10,000 IQ play because originally it's like a 20 IQ play. <laughs> Alright, so he activates Kikalios. I'm chaining all these cards to it. And then I'm like, you know what? Imperm, bitch. Cause this card's really annoying. It lets him grab their trap or it gets them like any other other cards. It's, it's very annoying. So we grab Jet, Puppy, get the pop. We got Penny. I'm like, he's draw. He's gonna draw a lot of cards off of this Maxi. By the way, Maxi bones the Melfi's over hard. Look, like, look, he's, he gets to draw like like four cards off of us. But we do get the arc light up. I think he's gonna draw another card too, because we we have to go to Avermax. If he tries to push into combat, we have to go Avermax. So he tries to push into combat, we have to go Avermax. Now the thing is, tier limit does have an out to Avermax. They have one out in the deck. It's called Underworld Goddess, and since he drew thirty cards, it's gonna be very easy for him to do that. So he, here he goes. Um. It's debatable here to activate Smashers to get rid of a card. To like, uh, like I could act, technically I could activate Smashers here, banish, banish, right? And then he would have to somehow find another monster. I was just thinking of longevity. Like if he does have those extra monsters, I'd rather use this to banish his trap. So. That's it. That's the only thing I maybe I think it probably was the right play to just activate Smashers and banish Kikalios. Because here he goes. He goes into Underworld Goddess. It's gonna negate my Herald. And remember that the negate from Underworld Goddess is a perma negate. So it, like the, these cards are negated for as long as they're on the field. So that's dead. And then he he is gonna activate foolish burial goods. He sends another scream, which made me fucking scream. Like it's so funny. Like he just activated this and he sends another one. What a goober. You're gonna activate smashers. Bam bam. We get rid of that. The card's very annoying. I mean he can't, couldn't really activate it, but it was still really annoying. So now we're just gonna have to find lethal. I was actually terrified of this. I was like, oh no. This is not going to go well, but he didn't hit any of his uh, uh, cards, so that was nice. We go into Soul Sweeper. This card can deal with the Goddess. And now we go into our Gigantic Sprite. By the way, do you guys know Gigantic Sprite? Uh, it can use material from another XZ monster on the field. Like, it doesn't even have to use it from its own. Kind of wild. And then he just concedes. I was going to Gamma Burst, and he was going to die, so... Uh, it is what it is. But yeah, we beat Sprite. I mean, we beat uh, Tournament. Pretty cool. And he had, like, a pretty insane, I would say, opening hand. Because having the second Max C for the Melfi combo, he would have lost, like, instantly without that. Because he wouldn't have a had enough gas. So, I thought it was pretty good. Hello, this is game number six in the final game. We're playing against Susan. Susan Oe Oe. I don't know what it was. Please don't hurt me. Uh, so I'm actually going to D-Shifter here because I'm like, okay, if my opponent's playing Tier Element, this is going to absolutely bone him. But if he's not, like, this doesn't hurt me that bad. 
Like, you have to kind of play weird when you have Shifter, but Shifter usually bones your opponent more than it bones us. Because you're going to see our board. Our board is still actually really good. So we're still going to end on Carrot. We end on Carrot, Red, and Melfi Wally. And we have Forest of the Mel. So this is the greatest thing. Because I, I the first game I draw Shifter, right? This is fine. I don't negate because I can't use called anyway. The first game I played fucking Shifter, guys. The first game I am able to use it. My opponent is playing Flow. Isn't that amazing? So I just help him out. I'm like, yeah, here you go. Trying to terraforming, fine. Prosperity. Get strikes. Terraforming. Is all fine. Alright, we negate. We, we get rid of Gigantic so we can pop it. If you use if you use carrot on the field spell and you do, you, you use one of these, uh, you're not popping this and you're probably screwed. This does open us up to get even lead, but I was kind of fine with it. So Melfi Wally, I'm gonna activate. This is the reason why. So remember how I said for Melfi of the Forest sucks ass? It's actually really good into flow because the negate lines up with their normal summons. See how his normal summon happened after this? So now I'm able to Melfield the Forest is Rubina, and it's pretty much a free negate, which is why I don't use red. And then I can chain my other abilities. But he has this card, which makes him actually dodge my Melfield the Forest negate. So in hindsight, maybe I should have used red, but I just didn't I didn't think it was if you you don't want to waste a negate, because this is a free negate. I don't know. I thought this was a fine negate. Goes for Toucan Sam. Toucan Sam scared me. Uh, by the way, since this all happens under a trigger, uh, Cal remember how I said Calantuyos, whatever this this card right here? Um, it is a mandatory effect, so this card actually ch chains first no matter what. So in this instance, you actually have to say no to this card just so you can use Sprite Red to negate Toucan Sam or you're screwed. Now, I am a little confused why he did not use uh, Rabina's effect to chain block. That that did confuse me. Like, can you guys let me know down in the comments whether or not he was locked out of being able to do this? Because I'm a little confused on it myself. But, um, yeah, he got absolutely decimated. We showed him the Melfi way, and that's the only way, really. Uh, let's get to the recap. Welcome to the recap, and thank you for watching this far. Just subscribe. I'm not even gonna go into a big spiel about subscribe or I'm coming. I'm coming somewhere Coming over the hills remember that uh, Also join our discord. It's the link is down below We're trying to grow that discord the main reason we're trying to grow it is so our tournaments are more lit We have weekly tournament tournaments this week is going to be a non-meta tournament. So any type of archetype you see at the Master Duel website on the on their, their tier list, that is not allowed in the tournament. So I think it's gonna be a very fun tournament. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's uh, look at how we did in the recap. So this again, I played this game, this deck in Diamond. We had a hundred percent win rate. We went eleven and zero. That's eleven wins, zero losses. Uh, we gained two ranks. Um, yeah, the deck's really good. Um, I'm going to say these extra Melfi cards, people have no idea what they do. And I think them having zero clue what they do is why we just pooped on everyone. Uh, they're, this deck's really strong, though. Uh, running the Dimension Shifter is really good because this deck runs really well into it. Um, I wouldn't run, like, Fissure or anything like that. I think that's, like, overboard, to be honest. Because you typically do want cards in the graveyard. Like, we do run, like, the Plague Spreader Zombie and stuff like that. Uh, but, yeah, like, any... I'm going to tell you this right now. If you open up... So, so let's just talk about the Melfi cards real quick. If you open up this card, it's not the end of the world. If you open up Puppy or Caddy, right? 
Uh, you need the plague spread. You need a, the plague spread of a zombie like ASAP to put these back in the deck. So the way you're gonna do that is you're gonna go into Gigantic Sprite. You spell special summon plague spreader zombie, right? Then you can use Plague Sprite Zombie and Gigantic Sprite to go into uh, Sprite Elf. So you pretty much ditch the whole Swap Frog plan. And then you're going to use Zombie's Effect to shuffle back one of them. Uh, and then with doing that, you also are going to use Sprite Elf to bring back another level 2. And then you XZ them both away to go into Melfi of the Forest. You go use Melfi's Effect. Send Plague Spreader Zombie to the graveyard, and then you do it again to the caddy. So that's a way of shuffling multiple cards back into your deck. Because remember, this card is not once per turn. Um, and trust me when I tell you, like, you have to do it because it ruins it. You can't combo correctly if you have these both in your hand. If you have this, it's not the end of the world. You lose your pop. But the being able to go into Arc Light or the Mary, like, mainly Arc Light is more important. So. But yeah, the deck was really, really strong. I, I would, uh, let's just do the power scaling right off the bat. I would rate this deck like, um, I rate this deck like a solid, like 8.5. No, I'd probably rate it a 9. Like, I rated the Vernisilf deck yesterday. I thought that deck was nuts. Uh, I rated that a 9. I'm going to rate this deck a 9 too. This deck is extremely strong. Um, and I think, I think a lot of people are expecting at least like the caddy combo. But I don't think people are expecting the, the, the Wally with with the Caddy, Puppy, and this card. So uh in a tier list, I'm gonna like again I'm gonna say it's probably the I'm gonna say most of these decks are probably on the same tier with each other, these top tier decks. I'm gonna say like 1.5 to 2 because tier limit is so good right now that I think it's just dominating the meta for the most part. I'd put that at tier zero and then everything else is probably like all the other like insanely good decks are probably like tier 1.5 or two compared to it. Other than that, I'd probably say this might be like a tier one deck. It's really, it's really good. Uh, cards that would change. Like I said, I think cat shark is just egregious. Like you don't really need it. Uh, dimension shifter. Again, you probably don't need it. I did like playing it though. Um, yeah, those are the main cards. I would say this card and this. Everything else, I think, well, the ratios are pretty good on. Uh, I mean, technically interchangeable cards, too. If you guys don't have Ghost Spell and you want to spring, you can just replace with an extra DD Crow. Uh, Ghost Spell is nice, though, because it's another stop to Call by the Grave. You can negate Call by the Grave with it. So, um, yeah, I think, I think the deck was good. I think you'll have a lot of fun. I, I was enjoying it. I thought it was a ton of fun. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's really not much else I could really explain about this deck. You guys kind of seen exactly what you do. It's very, it's very like linear in that sense, um, where you kind of do like, you want to do your basic combo, at least get the basic cards out. You want to get like IP, Sprite Elf, Melfi of the Forest, Carrot, and prop with Smashers or something. You know what I mean? Like, like that's a basic combo you want to do. So Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know down in the comments what deck you want to see next. I'm actually probably going to be making uh, Madolce. So I hope you guys are excited for that. Um, so yeah. Goodbye.